Hey, today I'm working on a, uh, a ResMed CPAP machine. This one is the ResMed Escape 2. And it has a little problem where the, uh, the power button no longer is responsive. And I'm going to go into this thing and I think I know what's wrong with it. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to fix it. It uses membrane switches and they become uh, contaminated. So on this machine, you can see uh, it's unplugged now. If I plug it in, you'll see it come up and start working in a minute. And it has a whistle I'd like to take care of at some point as well. So this, uh, these are the switches here, they're membrane switches. And you basically lift this cover, this little handle here, and this cover is just snaps on with the, the magic of some plastic clips. Always afraid this thing's gonna break. Plastic clips, yeah. Sounds like it's breaking, but I think she's coming. Not for the faint of heart, I guess. There we go. So you can see uh, down inside of the connections, little contacts that are um, bridged with this, the membrane switches here. So I've got a little contact cleaner. I'm not going to spray it on the equipment, but I'm going to spray it into a little cup here. And then use a uh, cotton swab to clean these contact points. And also to clean the switch contacts. So I've cleaned the contacts, now I'm going to apply the uh, this uh, restoration kit here. I've opened the bottle and uh, of this conductive adhesive here, and I'm going to I'm agitating it, stirring it up a little bit. I can tell it has settled to the bottom. And I'm just going to lightly paint it on the contacts here. And let it dry about 20 minutes.
try to save this. I'll run this back into the uh, the jar here. And I have now that I have it on a stick here, I'm, I'm gonna use a stick to let me know when it's dry. Um, and then I can uh, put the cap back here. So when the, when the uh, material on the stick dries, then I'll know that the material on my contacts have dried as well. And then I can proceed to install it. So while the switch is drying, I want to take the opportunity to study the clip, how the um, how this panel is uh, retained in a unit. And you can see right here, there is a, 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 um, a ledge on this side of the um, this clip here. And there's also, there's a clip back here and the ledge is on the opposite side here. And then again, there's another clip here and those are the three things that hold this piece in. And there's also two tabs right here. You can see uh, two tabs that are that go in and guide it into slots that uh, keep this retained in. But really what holds it in are these three clips. One long one here, and then these two little ones here. So I'm going to remove the rubber membrane from this uh, housing here and I'm going to put this in the oven to encourage it to dry quicker and uh, according to the directions it can dry for 10-15 minutes uh, at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. It's kind of cool in here so it's taking a long time to dry but I'm going to encourage it to dry quickly by putting it in some heat. I wanted to talk a little bit about these switch pads here that you see down inside. Um, they're actually wired in uh, parallel. And there's three here, three here, two, two, and two. And what I mean by parallel means the way they're wired, either this uh, array or this array needs to be shunted or shorted to send a signal to start and stop. And in this case, it's just one of the three. Any one of the three will uh, trigger that switch. And in these, in the case of these, either or, or both will trigger the event. And I'll show you, uh, I'll draw that on a piece of paper and show you what, what I mean by that. And so here's the case of two switches. When you press uh, the button, whichever one, uh, the way the membrane is, uh, one or the other or both may, may come in contact and make the connection, but it doesn't have to be both. It can be just one of them is all it needs to uh, send the signal. So normally like one, one side here would be ground and the other side would go into some kind of input to a chip. And so you basically send in a low level input in to uh, trigger the on off condition in this case. So that's what I mean by when uh, the switches are wired in parallel. If they were wired in series, it would mean uh, it'd be more like this, where both switches would have to be uh, engaged to get a signal out that the uh, electrons would have to come through here and, and through there. But in this case, the electrons are coming up and they're going through either either or switch to make the connection up here. So the conductive uh, repair 
has had a chance to dry, so I'm just going to uh, test these out with a voltmeter here. And you can see they're highly conductive now. And that's one problem with these the buttons. There's just a very small amount of contact surface. A large button, but when you really look at it, it's not much uh, contact surface. And so uh, these look good. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the CPAP machine now. Then it just, it's going to snap into this. There's the long tab there. And there's these, uh, these tabs here are tamed down inside there. Actually, I think I'm going to try putting it in there like that. And I can just test it here. I can plug it in. And it should power up in a second. So it works great now. I'm tempted to leave this off, but I'll go ahead and snap it back in place. But the switches, switches are working great now. Just need to put this back into position. And so the next time I go to unsnap it, I'll see there's a, a snap back in the back, and then there's one on each side here that um, you just pop it up on each side, it appears. And there it is. It's ready to go. Thanks for watching, and hope, hope that you found the video helpful, and good luck with your projects.